have with me CEO of Alchemist, Steve Narioff. Thank you for joining us today in studio. Thank you. I appreciate it. It's been an exciting 24, 36 hours. You've been in town for a couple days now. Yes, I love Providence. I love the people, love the atmosphere, the energy here. It's just it's a great place. So talk with us a little bit. You were there with close to 100 real industry insiders who know a lot about blockchain. But we've been reporting on this, and I think a lot of folks really just want to know a little bit more about the concept, the definition of blockchain. So blockchain is this new technology that <clears throat> uh, allows people to kind of do things that we weren't able to do before. And it's best explained by using examples of, of the new uh, processes which we can utilize. So like an example of blockchain is, uh, many people may have heard, have you heard of Bitcoin? Mm -hmm. So a lot of people have heard of Bitcoin. So Bitcoin was kind of revolutionary because they created this, what's called a decentralized network. And that for the first time allowed certain things to happen. One example of that is Bitcoin has a certain value. So you could transfer the Bitcoin to me without using a bank, mm -hmm. you know, without using a third party. And that's revolutionary. We've never allowed people to, we've never had a system that you could send something to me and I could trust that you were sending it to me. It's called trustlessness, but that means I don't have to have trust in you. I can have trust in the network. Mm. And so that's a, a starter point with where the blockchain is because we were talking a little bit. You're like, it's almost like telling folks to envision the internet without being able to get on the internet. Right, so right now we haven't had that moment where people actually see what the blockchain is. So it's hard for so anybody out there that doesn't understand what I'm saying. This is, this is a really hard concept to understand. <clears throat> the, uh, the internet, you can actually go in your browser and see what's happening. Blockchain, so not yet. Uh, we hope that will change. But for now, you could do something like there are all these other computers and they're making sure that the network is secure. And so what does that mean? Let me give you an example. You're sending a Bitcoin to me. Mm. You know, we agree that you're going to send this amount of value, call it $10 worth of Bitcoin, you know, or, or, or $100, it doesn't matter. <coughs> you send that, all of these other computers on the network are processing that transaction and they all have to agree that transaction occurred. So it's mm. not so much you and I are agreeing. It's everybody. Everybody else is agreeing. So if everybody else agrees, then that transaction happened and it can't be reversed. So once you send it, you know it's going to come to me. Or once I get it, I know it's not going to leave my account. Mm. Uh, and so that's a really radical concept because there isn't a third party in the middle of this. So now all of a sudden, people from around the world or from around the corner can send money to each other uh, without having a third party involved. That's a pretty, I think a pretty layman's terms for explaining to folks exactly uh, sort of the blockchain concept. But I just want to introduce folks to you. We were able to do a live stream yesterday at the conference. But tell us about a little bit of your career trajectory. And, you know, sitting there at noontime on Thursday and being the guy to talk about blockchain here in Providence. So I uh, originally was trained as an attorney. Uh, and then I went into high tech. In fact, I was in Silicon Valley when all the internet stuff was going crazy out there. So I got a real good taste of you know what a new explosive technology could be like, something that's hard to grasp and you don't even know all the possible use cases for it. Uh, I continued running that for many years and then uh, uh, earlier this decade got involved in Bitcoin. Uh, there wasn't much other than blockchain other than Bitcoin at the time. Mm. And so we were all Bitcoin people. And so we got involved in Bitcoin and we were watching it and we were really interested in the underlying technology that was making this happen. We mm. couldn't understand how it was happening and we wanted to make sure that it was real and it was, and over time we've really said, wow, this is really happening. We can really do this. Meaning people can do stuff from with each other from thousands of miles apart and feel confident that they're doing that. And so it's not, uh, so we started working with, uh, our company's called Alchemist, and we started working with dozens and dozens of other companies and helping them build their projects up. So we would help them with, you know, how do they get the technology implemented? You know, what's, what's the use case that they're trying to implement? Are they trying to send money? Or are they trying to do something else that you could do now if two people can interact with each other? What are all the possibilities? 
And we've now developed probably over 70 projects. Yeah. So we've gotten involved in a lot of projects. It's a really exciting time. It's, you know, it's changing the world. It's really, you know, and what a lot of us uh, were involved in the early days, and it's still the early days, is that this is not a technology that's only going to help you know, people in, in sending money. It's mm. actually going to change society. Well, a lot of that was discussed yesterday at the summit as well. It's applications, uh, state government, uh, social media, uh, mm -hmm. plenty to, uh, to look at as well. So let's talk a little bit about that from the state's examples and being here in Rhode Island, having yeah. state leaders at the table about what folks in the industry are looking at states for in terms of how this could have an impact. I know one of the topic points that came on was bond offerings. I mean, that's just one of many ways that this could change it. So talk a little bit about how folks here in Rhode Island say, well, if it comes here, and it, well, from a governmental perspective, what that could even look like. So there are things, you know, there's, there's a, a number of things going on here, and one of them is taking a lot of the functions of the government and saying what it's called, putting it on the blockchain. Now, the blockchain is, they call it a distributed ledger. It's like a spreadsheet or database. Uh, the, what can you do when now you have this um, spreadsheet database amongst many other people? Everybody's holding a copy of it. Mm. Everybody's making sure that it's working properly. It's not one central place. And you have things like you can trust its validity. Nobody can change it. And if they do change it, it'll show that they change that. So now, there's fingerprints. There's absolutely, there's a <laughs> breadcrumb trail anywhere you go. So you have to be really careful if you want to try to, if you, it's, it doesn't get hacked. It's really secure and it's open for everybody to see. So now when you look at a government function, something like a birth certificate, something like a land title, these are something like your, your title to your car. These are things that are sitting in a central data place someplace and this new system of blockchains offering huge advantages in areas that you want to be sure that your title is not going to get changed. Mm. This is really important that it's not going to get hacked, that somebody's not going to put it in their name and that you know if, uh, if when I transfer to you, and it happens on the blockchain, just like if somebody tries to do something not so nice, but we're doing something valid, mm. it's going to show that transfer. And that can't ever be done. A hundred years from now, that transfer will still show you know, between me and you. And so that's uh, really exciting to be able to put all of this stuff on the blockchain. It's uh, imperative. We're, we take it for granted here, but when you look at countries outside of the uh, United States and, and, United, and Europe and certain parts of Asia, they don't have developed systems. Mm. And so they're, they didn't even get to our last set of systems. <laughs> they're going to just leapfrog right yeah, over it. <laughs> it's kind of what happened with copper wires. You know? They just went and went right to wireless, these, these second and third world countries. So they're actually <coughs> going to be ahead of us, and a number of countries are ahead of us right now. And so, but it still benefits us. And people don't, you know, you're paying a lot of money for things like title insurance and this to make sure that, that when you buy a house, you're actually, you own this house, you have title to this house. This will help in a long way assuring all of that. And let's talk a little bit about what that would look like here from sort of a regulatory standpoint. If blockchain were really to have a, a foothold and a presence here in Rhode Island, um, just allowing companies to come in to be able to uh, bring this here. What does that look like? You know, how is how are lawmakers sort of involved with this process? Uh, banking regulators. Right. So uh, with blockchain, because it's a new technology, <coughs> and because our laws uh, in many parts of, of the United States uh, are a little old. <laughs> so you know, we, we there are laws, and it's the old round peg in a square hole. We have laws. <laughs> that, uh, <laughs> I don't Just know. won't apply. That's right. And so they, they're, these laws simply don't apply. When they made the laws, they were never thinking in a while of the streams of something like this technology. So it just doesn't apply. And so they have to come out with new laws. Mm. The laws change very slowly. Mm. Technology moves very quickly. Yes. These are not a good race. <laughs> so the one thing that, that there's an opportunity for certain states, like Rhode Island, where it's a big thinking state, where it has fantastic proximity to other great locations, uh, but it's got an amazing standard of living. It's a modern city. It's got you know, wonderful low crime, high standard of living. Yet it can attract this new industry. And it could attract these high paying jobs. It could attract uh, companies that have a lot of funding that are looking for a home. And one of the areas that they really could be helpful for each other, both, mm. is coming up with regulations. The regulations should apply to this type of technology. The regulations should 
first and foremost should protect the consumer. That's what it, that it, sh what mm -hmm. it should do. But it should be something that a company in this industry could look and say, I understand what it says. I may or may not like <laughs> it, but I understand <laughs> it. Right now, they just don't even, they, it doesn't exist or they, whatever exists, they don't understand. And so there's a few fo um, different um, states that are looking to be forerunners. And you find this in all new technologies. Mm. So it's a matter of who's going to take a leadership. Rhode Island has historically, as the United States has developed, has shown a leadership role. It's an opportunity to reassert that leadership. The new industrial revolution Absolutely. potentially could start here. There was an interesting anecdote when you were speaking yesterday at the summit uh, about your role with your business and basically getting a legal opinion that then folks in Switzerland wanted to take a look at. As you talk about it being the Wild West, can you just go over this uh, the story here about your role? So that's called the law of unintended consequences. So there was a, a, another um, a technology similar to Bitcoin, it's both a blockchain technology, it's called Ethereum. Uh, we, I came up with a structure on the legal side in terms of how to do the offering because we were selling, uh, they were called tokens, we were mm. selling similar to Bitcoin as a token, this one is called Ether, it's another token, mm. and it's something of value. And people contributed to this by paying money. And we had to find a legal way of making that happen. Uh, so that, uh, we, we got a law firm, a really prominent law firm, to give us an opinion uh, that that was a kosher transaction. That uh, They looked, they worked very diligently to make sure over many months that there were other countries that were looking for laws so they could move their, their they were wanted to move very fast and capture this technology and capture the industry. Switzerland was one of those. And so the, the Swiss uh, legal framework folks wanted, needed some legal precedent in another country. Frankly, there just wasn't any. There wasn't any. <laughs> so what they were able to do was to take the opinion letter that uh, I put together with the law firm and use that as a legal precedent. That's unusual. <laughs> And let's talk a little bit about that, <clears throat> excuse me, about the cryptocurrencies. A lot of folks, again, have heard of Bitcoin, but now we're hearing of more. So talk about the space that you saw. Let's talk about the ether of the need and your entrance into the market and what you envision moving forward. So uh, in, in, the, in the... Crypto, but, but you know, where Ethereum is. Right, so right now there's a, a ton of uh, still more technology that needs to get developed in order for this to go worldwide. Okay. And there are a lot of really super, super smart people that I don't even understand some of the things that they're saying and nobody understands because they're <laughs> speaking like another language that's not from Earth. But, and literally they've built new languages. They're programming languages to be fair, but they built all new languages for this new area. Mm. And so there are things that they're dealing with like scalability. How quick can the system move? How many people right now you have something, just like we were talking about, sending money back and forth. Well, what if you wanted to have that for credit cards? Well, Visa, MasterCard process about 25,000 transactions a second. A second? A second. So, so you need something that is responsive to this. So you need something <laughs> that can handle a lot of people going to a lot of coffee stores <laughs> and buying a lot of coffee uh, at the sa very same time. They can't. Yeah, so many of these, some of these systems can only handle 10, 15 transactions a second. So they said, okay, it's working. Now let's figure out how to take it to the next level. And unlike a lot of technologies in the past, the government is just starting to get their hands into this. The internet, most people don't know, they think the internet came around in 1995. It was, it was around for about 30 years before that. And that was funded by the government um, and universities. So it was education, it was government. <coughs> they, it was called the ARPANET. They developed it for many years. And then the underlying uh, protocol or system that the internet sits on that makes it work is TCPIP. And that's similar to like a Bitcoin. And so that was also, the government was involved, big industry was involved, so it was a huge effort. Here you had a different situation. You have, in many cases, 20-year-old kids that are really smart, that are coming out with ideas, and they're rolling with it. And unlike places in the past, you're having money coming in from all around the world saying, I think that's revolutionary. We're going to bet on that one. Okay. And so they're, they're, they're developing. Now the governments are starting to move in. Uh, it's not just the United States. Uh, you have... Uh, Europe moving in, China is moving very, very fast in this area. They're, China wants to put the whole country, as far as I can see, on the blockchain. <laughs> and that's and a big country. And, you know, could that happen in the, in the foreseeable future? That they're so moving so far right now that it would be very much in the foreseeable future. Yeah, absolutely. It's, uh, 
Uh, all of Asia is moving really fast in this area. So they, there's, the, there's, a, there's a step up. There is an international race going on right mm. now. And who can develop this technology the fastest? Who can be the leadership? Because the behemoths that we saw come out of the internet, these companies worth hundreds of billions of dollars, but to be fair, last time the United States captured most of that. And it was, most of it was in Silicon Valley mm. and a few other uh, select areas. Uh, this time around, it's gone worldwide. So there's a race, and the United States has the talent, it has the, the capital, it has everything to compete in this area. And it's not no one, nobody's going to win this all. You know, it's a matter of everybody pushing everybody else to get better. Well, I appreciate your coming in to come break it down a little bit. Again, I was happy to be able to there, be there for the fireside chat yesterday. Lots of coverage on Go Local about elected officials there being at the Rhode Island Blockchain Summit as well as we look forward for the potential for blockchain here in Rhode Island. But Steve Narioff with Alchemist, thank you so much for taking the time to come in. Thank I you for having it. me. Appreciate it. Don't go anywhere. I'll be right back with our next guest here in the Navigant Credit Union Broadcast Center.